And where do we even start off with this? The final whistle has just gone at Goodison Park, where United have been, there's no other word for it, embarrassed by Everton. Four goals to nil, and it could have been more, let's be perfectly honest. A shocking performance from United in a game which meant so much to United season. Because if we won this, we would be straight back in those top four positions and would be would be on the coattails of the likes of Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal. No, we're five points off it with four games remaining. It's done. It's done as far as I'm concerned. So clear your Thursday evenings for next season because we are going to be back in the Europa League, which actually might not be the worst thing in the world, to be honest, because we've just, see, we've just shown this week how far off we are against teams in the Champions League. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise when you look at things, but... Just a shocking, shocking performance. Probably the worst United performance I have ever seen in the 25 years plus that I've been watching United, which goes to show you just how piss poor we actually were. And the most infuriating thing of it is that the team we lined up with, the team, the starting 11 we went out there with, was not actually the worst in the world. I was actually looking forward to see how they play and how they reacted coming out of that disappointing performance against Barcelona in midweek. We had David Dea in goal. We had a back four of Dallow. No Ashley Young in sight in the starting eleven. We had Chris Smalling, Victor Lindelof and for some reason Phil Jones in there as well. Why we're still going with Smalling and Phil Jones in 2019 is beyond me. That's the one thing I will hold Ole Gunnar Solskjaer accountable for. The rest of it wasn't his fault. The midfield went with Matic, Fred and Paul Pogba. And then the forward three went with was Martial, who I thought was lucky to be in the starting eleven, if I'm honest. Lukaku on his return to Goodison Park and Marcus Rashford. And we started off so sloppily. So sloppily. We didn't look up for it. There was no tempo from United. We looked, we, we were panicky in possession, just booting it here, there and everywhere. No composure on the ball. We weren't, we weren't running with the Everton midfielders. That was the main problem for United in that first half. United's midfielders, uh, sorry, Everton's midfielders... We're getting in that half space between the defence and midfield and we couldn't keep track of them. Matic, I mean, playing with the Manu Matic these days, United may as well be playing with 10 men. That is how poor he's been since he's come back from his injury. He was great when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came in, but since he's had that little bit of a knock which meant he missed the uh, PSG game, since that point, he's been awful. P perhaps even worse than he was under Jose Mourinho which I didn't even think he could get much worse than that. So just a, just a really poor performance from Matic. Again, another experienced player letting this United side and United supporters down yet again. He clearly cannot cut it at this level, along with Ashley Young. Both of those two should be the first names out of the door at Old Trafford this summer because neither of them can function as a professional footballer with the way United want to play and the way that teams are stopping United from playing, which is closing us down. That's what Everton were really good at. They were closing those spaces down, not letting us get on the ball in midfield, not letting us not letting us dawdle on the ball, which we were doing, not not letting us just hassling us and making us panic when we're on the ball, which obviously that is our speciality, isn't it, really, at the minute, but yeah, uh, I mean, we didn't even get our forward three players involved in the first half, if I'm being honest. The only time was from a Paul Pogba long ball that reached Rashford, and even then he went with the wrong foot, Rashford. But into, And that was the story of the uh, first half, really. United conceding two really poor goals. First one from a, a long throw, which you should know when you're up against Everton that they're going to bombard your box with crosses, corners and throw-ins. And that's exactly what they did in those first 10 minutes. And it paid dividends for them with Richarlison getting the goal. Little bit of a shout for a uh, dangerous play because his foot was so high, but cl clutching at straws there. And then the second goal, it was just shocking defending. Awful championship level defending. Where Sigurdsson running alongside Matic. Matic is his man. And Matic gives him 10, 12 yards. Nowhere near tight enough. And he, might, he gets the shot off. Dayers should do better, but he, he can't give a player like Sigurdsson that much time to get a shot off. He loves scoring against United. He scores against us pretty much every game we play against him. So why would you give him that much space? He's obviously their danger man, 
So you'd be touched tight to him. You wouldn't be giving him 10 yards, but he did. And the result was pretty uh, emphatic, to be honest. And going into that second half, I thought maybe Ollie's had a bit of a go and maybe give him a bit of a bollocking in the in the, in the the dressing room. Uh, we made a couple of changes. Scott McTominay coming in. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Ashley Young coming back onto the pitch for United. Who, uh, yeah, um, and United did start a little bit brighter in that second half, at least knocking the ball a little bit with a little bit of pace and power and putting a bit of zip on the passage. But again, terrible defending, this time from a set piece, not getting the ball away quick enough, not reacting to the ball dropping. They were winning the, the second balls time and time again today, Everton. And this was what the third goal came from. Headed out, fell to Lucas Digne, and he just hit a decent enough strike, but again, just not closing him down anywhere near enough and giving him too much time. And then the fourth goal was just, just shambles. We were, for some reason, 3-0 down, pushing so high up the pitch. The ball found itself to Zygurdsson. He slipped in. Walcott, he was at the freedom of Goodison Park and a decent finish. I mean, when Theo Walcott's scoring against you in 2019, you know something's wrong. And... From that point onwards, we, uh, yeah, it was just kind of running out the clock, if I'm honest. We only managed our first shot on target in the 86th minute, which goes to show you how, how lack, lacking we were in that final third. We lack, we just didn't couldn't put anything together. We couldn't find the space. We couldn't find the passes. Just a, a terrible day at the office for United. And probably, like I say, puts to bed our top four chances. I can't see how we're going to get back in in the mix this time. Top four, as far as I'm concerned, is done and dusted. And, uh, it, yeah, like I say, we're back into Europa League territory. What I hope happens is that Ollie just plays the youth in the Europa League and lets United constant the proper United players, the first team, just concentrate on the league next season because that needs to be our bread and butter. We cannot be this far off next season. We just simply cannot be. It is unacceptable. Unacceptable to be this far off next year. Just, and, yeah, I mean, we've just got the small matter now of the Manchester derby on Wednesday. So, Liverpool fans out there, I hope you're not relying on us lot for take a, uh, any points off City because on the basis of this, it could be a cricket score for City, which I wouldn't be too disappointed about, to be perfectly honest. But, yeah, the remainder of the season, the season's over as far as I'm concerned. Play the youth in the rest of the games. Let them play because the experienced ones are the ones that have let us down. Bang them in the under-23s. Play the reserves. Just just play the youth. If anyone knows what it's like to be a United player and how much it means to us, it's the youth players. So get them out there. As far as man of the match, <laughs> that is a question and a half, if I'm being honest. Uh, none of them. I, can't, I honestly cannot bring myself... To say any of them deserve man of the match. Pogba maybe was the worst, was the least worst. None of them were good, but Pogba was a little bit better than the rest of them. He was at least showing a little bit of composure, but even he was pretty rotten today. None of them, none of them. I can't give it to him. I honestly cannot give it to him. And before we get stuck into this all, oh, it's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I'm not laying the blame one bit on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for this United side. It's not his side. It's a side that's been that's been populated by mediocre players over the last six years and three managers that he's having to deal with. He's having to deal with a footwit of an of a, of a executive above him who hasn't got the slightest clue about football, yet he's going spending money like it's a Monopoly game. And he's having to deal with egotistical, experienced players that, have, that haven't got it in them anymore. They haven't got the fight in them to fight for this United shirt. So I don't blame Ole Gunnar Solskjaer one iota for this performance and nor should anybody else. It's the players that need to take responsibility. It is the players' job and it is the players who should be held accountable. But God only knows where we go from here. But let me know in the comments section who your man of the match was. Was there anybody that deserves man of the match? And would you play the youth for the rest of the season? Bang! your comments in the comment section below and as always if you have enjoyed this bang a like on the video hit that subscribe button i'm gonna go and lie down for half an hour to recuperate after that because fuming 
is not the word. But like I say, going to have a lot of content coming up on the channel, both towards the end of the season and in pre-season. So keep it locked to the channel and I'll catch you guys next time.